Hello everyone, welcome to my third year course on microprocessor and microcontroller. The course code is BTEEC503. In this lecture, we will see the basics of microprocessor and microcontroller, then course plan for this particular course and then class assessment scheme for this particular course. I have shared you the course web page and I will be updating with the notes or PowerPoint presentations then laboratory instructions if any after each lecture all my lectures will be recorded and the video link will be of that recording will be shared to you on the course web page and you will be notified accordingly so next one is course outcome after learning this course you are able to know the architecture of 8085 and 8051 uh, number second that you are able to understand the interfacing and interstructures or inter features of 8085 and 8051 and number three after learning this course you are able to develop some basics program with some basic applications so basically what is what is this course course will help you in understanding the operation of microprocessor microcontroller its machine language programming and then the interfacing techniques the application of this course are in industries in the research field and also in commercial field applications so microprocessor is called as a computer on chip and it is fabricated on single integrated circuit that is ic okay the main job of this microprocessor is to take information as input from the input devices and then process it this information and based on the directions and then it will provide the output to the output devices so Visually, if you see any microcontroller or microprocessor, uh, there is hardly any difference between them. So, there is no difference between uh, when we look at a microcontroller or a microprocessor, they almost look identical. Okay, but there are difference in many aspects like uh, there is a difference like a microprocessor system, memory elements like RAM, ROM, IO port, serial interface, timers, all are connected externally. While in case of microcontroller, as they are used for specific task, okay, uh, the amount of memory and I/O port are required are limited in terms of microcontroller. Okay, the microcontroller, all the memory elements and I/O ports are integrated along the CPU inside a single chip. The size of overall system is much smaller. Whereas in microprocessor, as the memory element and I/O ports are connected externally, so the overall size of the system is larger than microcontroller. Again, uh, they are different in terms of processing powers. So microcontroller and microprocessor are different in terms of processing powers which they possess, and they are different in terms of power consumption also. When we talk about the application. The classical application of microprocessor application is a personal computer or a laptop. So using this laptop you can do a lot of stuff like uh, uh, we can use it for the gaming, we can use it for the web browsing, we can go for uh, photo editing or creating any documents or we can use it for mathematical calculations or simulation etc etc etc. The microprocessor is basically used in the application where the task is not predefined okay so task is not predefined in terms of microprocessor and the task is depends upon the user how user is going to use this microprocessor okay and it is used in application where intensive processing is required i'm coming to the microcontroller the microcontroller is used for some specific tasks based upon the inputs given to the microcontroller it provides the results as an output Okay, the information could be a user input or the inputs which are coming from the sensors. So, whatever the sensor data is there, it will act as an input to the microcontroller. The example for this microcontroller application is the digital camera. You can say washing machine or even microwave, oven, etc. There are so many applications of microcontrollers are there. If you see these all these devices, the task which is going to be performed is predefined. So in microprocessor system, there is no predefined task, whereas in microcontroller, there is a predefined task. Okay, now in case of microwave oven, let us take this example of microwave oven. So in case of this oven, once you set the power and the timing, it gives you the cooked food. 
likewise in case of washing machine once you set up some the parameters of the devices it gives you a clean and dry clothes the microcontroller is used when the application where the task is predefined just remember that and then the other details we will be see in upcoming videos let us see the syllabus of the course okay so when i am talking about the syllabus so the syllabus is uh, based upon the university okay as the university syllabus of this microprocessor and microcontroller course required 34 hours of teachings and uh, and my aim is to finish the course within that deadline so the two courses as digital electronics you can see and the solid state devices are the prerequisite to learn and understand this microprocessor and microcontroller and I know that you have already studied these courses in your second year. Okay, these courses are of six units. So total microprocessor and microcontroller uh, subject is of six unit or six modules. You can say that the first unit is architecture of 8085 microprocessor and programming. Here you will learn about the architecture of 8085. After architecture, we are going to see 8085 instruction set various addressing modes and then we will learn about some assembly language programming when uh, we talk about the second unit so second unit is totally based upon the interfacing here you will see that how the memory and other uh, input and output devices are interfaced with the microprocessor so we will see here some memory interfacing techniques and other is io interfacing techniques so in memory interfacing techniques you will learn about how to interface your SRAM, your EPROM and DRAM to your microprocessor. In IO interfacing, we are going to learn about the interfacing with various input and output devices to the microprocessor. After interfacing, you will learn about various data transfer schemes that is uh, programmable data transfer, uh, DMA data transfer, interrupter driven data transfer, etc. etc. And then we will look some simple keyboard interface. In the third unit, uh, we are going to see some interrupts. Okay, then interrupts characteristics, its types, uh, and the structure of interrupt, and then more on ISR that is interrupt service subroutine. In the lateral part of this third unit, we will see a DMA controller that is our programmable direct memory access controller 8237. Now, in the fourth unit of this course is an application where we are going to learn about interface your microprocessor with analog to digital converter digital to analog converter then we are going to see traffic light controller then control of stepper motor and dc motor this much we will learn in microprocessor 8085 uh, and then the next two chapters are uh, totally devoted to 8051 microcontroller okay so in unit fifth you will see 8051 microcontroller there you are going to learn about the architecture of 8051 it's a memory organization addressing modes instruction sets and then some simple program of 8051 in the sixth unit you will learn interrupt structure then timer its mode of operation and also some interfacing part of 8051 uh, when we look for the reference books so the reference books which are given and we are following are the Microprocessor Architecture, Programming and Application that is the first reference book authored by Ramesh Gaukar and the second book for interfacing we are using that is Microprocessor and Interfacing, Programming and Hardware authored by Douglas V. Hall. Uh, then uh, for microcontroller we will use 8051 Microcontroller and Embedded System authored by Mazidi. Uh, though this book is not given in the reference section of this particular syllabus uh, but we will use this for our course okay then uh, we will talk about some uh, examination okay so in the examination you can see that uh, uh, the examination scheme is about a midterm exam that is 20 mass is given for midterm exam internal assessment 20 mass and then end semester exam is of 60 marks okay uh, so basically uh, for uh, for uh, mid semester and end semester will be conducted by the university and for internal assessment uh, i have given you 
a class assessment scheme so based upon this class assessment so total 20 marks will be given so in class assessment uh, the first point is your attendance attendance means if any uh, attendance or you can say the progress uh, from a Moodle so whatever the course page is there and whatever your progress is there that is uh, taken as consideration and your uh, progress is monitored and in, uh, the it gives you 2.5 marks out of 20 marks then second point is Moodle as our course page we will give you uh, various MCQs you can say true or false numerical drag and drop questions short answers questions games etc etc after each lecture or after a week and then long answer assignments on each unit so this total uh, second point carries your uh, 10 marks and then number three is your seminar so in this uh, in this particular course i have added seminar and the weightage for the seminar that is your presentation skills required 7.5 marks okay so uh, it includes your presentation on the given topic maximum of seven minutes again uh, your presentation will be assessed by the slide management or your presentation style you can say your technical content and whatever pursued values you are you have in this particular topic and then a report of the seminar which is again online report you can see so total 20 marks have been uh, described by these three different quantities one is attendance or progress of Moodle then Moodle various cues on the Moodles and then seminar okay thank you for uh, watching this thank you